Hey, Horde and soon to be Horde. This is the Injustice Count, where I keep those alive in line and make them pay for it. I'm Zombo Undead Person. And I'm Mini Zom. And this is what we do here. We look at the media and track down each time that one of us is harmed, killed, or just straight up offends us. Each time this happens, we give it a violation. We add up those violations, and based on the score, mostly based on how I feel, we will determine how we take them to court for a lawsuit or let them exist for another day. We also crave gore. I love gore so much. Gore is very much what we're excited about, and just to be warned, we don't hold back on that excitement. Today, we take a look at Hotel Transylvania. Oh, by that one yelling guy? Because I'm a madman! Yeah, you! You ruined my life! Yeah, I kind of doubt they're going to take any of us seriously at all. I saw Leo. That seemed like it was cute and fun. Maybe this will be, too. Even though it's a kid's film and there may not be any of it. Gore, please! Back in the day, we see Dracula caring for a child and working with a goblin contractor. As we see Mavis grow up, we see Dracula keep her sheltered. He reads her a book about the horrible nature of humankind. What a great dad. It's best to learn about the dangers of mankind early. He sings about how much he'll care about her and... If a human tries to harm you, I'll simply say... Wow. Can you see that? Good thing for Adam Sandler that the rating board doesn't speak undead knees. An accident! Mavis continues to grow up as they finally finish the hotel. Dracula seems like an awesome dude. He gives us so many jobs, like security duty and helping build the hotel. <laughs> hey, look, um, zombie men have needs and, uh... It was a different time. A different time for what? Manual labor. Moving on. To the modern day times. At night. We see all of Dracula's friends come to the hotel. The lovely zombie staff grabs the luggage as we see an aliveryless utopia before us. I do truly appreciate the commitment to undead employment. What a wonderful place. <laughs> they even went as far as to hire a zombie for the head maintenance guy. Aww. I believe in you head zombie maintenance, dude. Do us proud. We tried to put Frank together the best way possible. We did fail, but we're trying our best. Better let us know that it's Mavis's 118th birthday. And look, Dracula has a speech that everyone needs to hear. A year of refuge from them! Being sadder so as to overpower or cut open our heads and put candy in them. But they will never find us here. Evil villain, you will never win! And that was the most beautiful speech that I've ever heard. Even though some of the facts are wrong, the energy is there. I love it. It has everything. The aliver hate, the representation, the zombie cameraman. More of this, please. Dracula sees Mavis, who wants to leave, giving her permission to go to a nearby village. Mavis flies off to the aliver world as Dracula follows hiding. She finds a clothing store and... <gasps> the alivers! They're attacking! You gotta run! They got fire and they're gonna steal your candy! You gotta get out! <laughs> Huh? Mini Zom, it's okay. It's just us hired to scare her. Oh. <sighs> well, that's a relief. It sure is. Our acting is superb. <laughs> Maybe they meant to do that? Mavis flies away scared. Dracula looking at her as an emotionally abusive father would. Then we get told to go back to work. work. Uh, hey, you don't need a mannequin. Aw, poor guy. He thought he would have a never alive wife. Don't worry, dude. There's better unalive things in the sea. Dracula's plan to work with Mavis's reaffirmation on hating alivers and never wanting to leave. <laughs> yes, what do you want? A cookie? You did all right, man. Move on already. He just said he wanted a raise. You know what? I take that back. Drac, you're a cheap capitalistic exploiter of labor. And through the door comes an aliver. Flashbacks from his past and from rational fear flow through him as he tries to get rid of him. Nowhere to dump him without causing suspicion, he hides him in the closet to dress him up to blend him in. He notices a skeleton and runs his hands through her. How inappropriate. Alivers just can't keep their hands to themselves. He then proceeds to run around and scream until he bumps into Mavis and a thing happens. Seems like they call it a zing. Eh, <laughs> that sounds painful. Yeah. It can be. Dracula takes him away, with the aliver running up the wall, worried his blood will be sucked. Ugh, classic human paranoia. Human blood is so fatty, and you never know where it's been. I disagree. I think the fat makes the blood juicy and flavorful. By removing that pleasure, you remove any reason to continue to unlive. We are 100% on different planets here, Drac. Dracula goes on a glorious rant about his establishment. It's a place I built for all those monsters. A place of peace. Relaxation and tranquility. 
Cool, so it's like a hotel for monsters? Congratulations, Liver. You stuck to your reputation for ruining everything. Dracula tried to ditch him out the window, only to be caught by Mavis introducing the Aliver as Frank's cousin. They leave through a secret tunnel and get lost along the way. Well, Dracula explains the obvious about undead stereotypes. About the garlic thing? Yes, I cannot have it. My throat swell. Wooden stake to the heart? Yeah, well, who wouldn't that kill you? Common sense, Drac. It's not that common. They run into the other characters who toss us around and electrocute us. We aren't your ragdoll playthings when you get mad. Completely disrespectful. The only salvation here is that we're still intact and Dracula said, Okay, now let's hug these zombies. Let's all make up. They convince Frank that Johnny is his cousin and a party planner for Mavis' birthday party. We got rejected to play at the party. Talk about a hit to the ego. They suck at playing, but then Johnny goes up there and brings the life to the party, instantly accepted by everyone. Snores filled for the events, but we're still out there working hard. But with cockroach paste and mouse jelly. Oh, and uh, with egg whites. It's like they don't even listen to us. And here comes Johnny, who accidentally becomes the life of the party again. Dracula kills the party vibes by emptying the pool. He takes Johnny to the graveyard and tries to men and black his memory. A simple contact lens stops that from happening, so he just kicks Johnny out. Well, it's about time. We don't need the liver telling us how to have fun. Davis finds him talking on the roof of the hotel as he shows her the sunset that she's never seen before. Dracula said Johnny left, but he literally fell into his lap. Dracula shows him a room with Johnny telling him a story about his wife, where the lovers mysteriously died in a fire. When in reality, a liver's out of fear and hate, unalived his wife, and Dracula and Mavis both fled. Well, the villains always fabricate the story to make themselves seem like they're the heroes. <laughs> Even though both have bonded throughout the film and Johnny would not hurt them, the world is not ready to change to accept them as equals. Do not hurt Mavis, they agree, and Johnny will leave once the party is over. It's for the best. Stay in your lane, Aliver. Everyone gets a wake-up call and the party starts off. Even the zombies are cutting loose, sharing heads and really getting down. They must be off the clock or Drac would be losing his mind. He sees her favorite person who showed her the world in a romantic way, giving him a thank you kiss which gets on Dracula's bad side. This makes him reveal what he did to her, using us for his makeshift shadow to keep her here. What a cheapskate! It's revealed that Johnny is an aliver, and naturally, everyone freaks out. But because of their zing, Mavis can't part with him. Fear of Dracula, Johnny calls Mavis a monster and leaves. She blames her dad and storms off with everyone leaving the party. Mavis sits on the roof with her dad, with Dracula soon realizing that he made a big mistake and he must get Johnny back. Meanwhile in the lobby, everyone is trying to check out while we take care of the mess. And he left us with the worst job again. This was Drax's fault. He finally comes down to address the madness with all of us agreeing that Johnny really wasn't that bad of a guy. Dracula points out how they zinged and now they have to get him back. They follow him by tracks and scent and they run into this... Aliver. Oh! They run into the monster festival with the roadblock and now they're forced to head on foot. They get the idea to show their real selves which makes everybody love them more. Frank stresses that Dracula needs to get to the airport as the fans create a sun barrier. He sucks in the praise as he gets to the airport as he sees Johnny get on the plane. He bolts into danger turning into a bat and getting to the plane. It's like that one time I had that dream zombo where I had the irrational fear of seeing a rat monkey and he was on the wing. Okay, you are just way too obsessed with this rat monkey. I want a rat monkey! Get right, in, give me one, I want one, I want one now! Down. Give me him! Right. He's up! I'm gonna get you one later, okay? Hooray! And we see Johnny watching Twilight. This is how we're represented. Unbelievable. Can relate. They can't understand each other, so he rushes to the front and takes over the pilot's mind. Dracula gives a speech to Johnny about how he learned he needs to trust Mavis and give Johnny a chance. Johnny gives a thumbs up for approval as Dracula turns the flight around with the Alivers losing their minds. I do approve of any attempt to make an Aliver suffer more. Yeah, they have to wait for another flight. <laughs> Dracula bursts into Mavis's room, giving her Johnny back. Ah, they're so cute. They both try to kiss and... <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I just, I got to get used to that. that Both kiss with a proper birthday celebration for Mavis. Ending the movie with a dance party. Uh-uh, get it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what an adorable film about actually representing a livers for who they are, and then changing that to something different. Let's get to the count. <laughs> there are some negative takes on zombies, but for the most part, this film was pretty harmless. Drac was the worst as he showed he cares some degree about his employees, but for some, I would be talking to a labor union about that. Now I do understand getting Johnny back from Mavis, but 
He is just an aliver. Haven't you learned anything from this, Sambo? What did you learn from this, Minizam? Johnny's not just an aliver. He brought joy and wonder to the monster's hearts, and they saw something different than the veil of prejudice based on someone's past. If they can look past it, I'm sure you can too. Nah, that just sounds like a liver propaganda. <sighs> Cheer up, Minizom. You'll learn to be pessimistic just like me one day. Gee, I hope not. Where the lovers mysteriously died in a f in a fair. Fire. Ugh, I can't say words. It's called a fire. A fair? What's wrong with me? Pop. I didn't state last time. I did. I did a boo boo. I did a boo boo. He bolts into danger, running into the back, getting to the uh, turning into a bat. God. Ah! Make me turn to myself. Ah! I had my eyes stitched shut. Cause I don't even shut up. I don't know.